Oh, it didn't restore me back to my last page. Alrighty, we're talking about classes, talking about objects. A class is a collection of pieces of data and the methods that can act upon them. And we've seen a couple of different ways that we can define them. We can define instance variables. Instance variables are things that are part of the class. They're the data elements that are part of the class. Then you can also define properties. Properties are a way that you can make your instance variables private to where they cannot be changed directly by the calling code, but you can then provide getters and setters, get methods and set methods that will expose those, uh, those variables. And if you want to get, do something that can only have a getter rather than a setter, then you can do that as well, which makes it effectively to them a read-only variable. So I want to hop right in and do another demonstration of getters and setters. And it turns out that there's more than one way of defining a property. And so we are going to look at that. There's a somewhat lengthy way, which is the way that we demonstrated last time. And there's a shorter way. Shorter ways are, are nice, aren't they? They uh, don't give us as much flexibility. But if all you're doing is providing a get and a set, then uh, you're good to go. So let's create an instance variable. Let's create a class called mouse. This will seem familiar to you Java programmers who've taken the Java class that uses the mouse class. So class mouse. And what it is is it's a uh, experimental mouse a lab rat kind of thing where we want to keep track of its weight and we want to keep track of how many days alive it is. And we want to set a growth rate for it. We'll get to uh, you know the fine functionality of that. But let's go ahead and define what we want out of it. A mouse has an age, a weight, a growth rate. It needs a grow method that'll add one to its age and increase its weight. So those are going to be methods. Or er, we'll we'll provide some methods that'll give us some access to this data. But for now, we're going to first just write the instance variables for it. And we're not going to make them private. Let's make them public. Public age. And every mouse starts off zero days old. Public weight. And every mouse starts off being five grams old. Five grams. And I'm forgetting to uh, assign types. Ages are ints. Weights are doubles and growth rate. Public double growth rate is equal to 105 percent or just 5 percent. It increases 5 percent a day but we're gonna have to divide it by zero right I mean by 100 to turn it into a proper percentage to get it to work. Alrighty, so now down here in Maine, we can create a mouse. Mouse Mickey is equal to new mouse. And let's write out the mouse's age and weight. Console dot right line. Mickey weighs percent zero grams and is not percent zero. I said percent zero, so I was doing C, you know, Java or whatever. Placeholder zero grams and is placeholder one days old. Now let's pass in our arguments. Mickey dot weight 
comma Mickey dot age. And I have a typo here. Weighs zero grams. Although it's always annoying when it says, you know, one grams or one days old, but whatever. We're not going to write anything to make that special. That's good enough. That would give us access to it. If we felt like it, we could suddenly change its age, right? We could say, um, Mickey, oh, come on. Mickey.age is equal to negative 10. Somehow the mouse has gone back in time. That's not too cool, but that's what we got in our code. And Mickey's dot weight is equal to zero. He's turned into a ghost. He's insubstantial. OK, that's silly stuff. But that's the kind of thing that you can do if you have direct access to the instance variables, which we do because they're public. So your better bet is to make them private. But that's going to break our code. Public int age is equal to zero. Public double weight. Oh, why did I just type in double again? Private int age is equal to zero. Private double weight is five grams. And if we want to be awesome, we put comments. That's the days variable, and this is measured in grams. OK. And control S to save anything, and kaboom, it blows up all of our variables. These are private. We can no longer access them directly. We're going to provide a solution for that, and it's not going to be the C sharp way. Why am I showing it to you anyways? Because you're going to see this a lot in other languages. And if you haven't taken those languages, you're going to have to remember because they don't do the C sharp way. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide a get age and a set age method. So public int get age. And all it does is return this dot age. And then public void set age that accepts an integer. And what it does is it sets this age equal to i. That's a perfectly serviceable solution, and it works in C sharp, as well as you know, a lot of other things that follow the, uh, you know, the C-based syntax, the C++ syntax. But we would have to change where we reference dot age in order to get that to work. For now, to remove our syntax errors around weight, I'm going to change the weight variable back to being a public. So right now, we have only encapsulated the age variable. But that leaves us with our problems down here. So I could do get age. And then when it was time to set the age, you see what I did there? Instead of just saying Mickey.age, I made it Mickey.getAge. And then down here, instead of Mickey.age equals negative 10, I'm going to do Mickey.setAge, parentheses 10, negative 10, whatever. All right, that corrected our errors. This is now a private variable. It can no longer be accessed directly by calling Mickey.age. Why would we provide these getters and these setters? Well, we could do some data validation here. We could make sure that we are not allowing the programmer, the user of our class, to write code that would set it to a negative value, right? So I'm going to expand our set age a little bit to do some data validation. If i is less than 0, it's going to be a problem. Console.write line cannot set age less than 0, defaulting to 1. And that's what we're going to do. So this age becomes 1. All right, I'm not liking the fact that I have i's and 1's here. Those are too easily confused. So I'm going to just call this age. No, I'm not. I'm going to call it value, int value. And so down here, if value is less than 0, we print out an error message. Cannot set age 
less than zero, defaulting to one. This dot age is equal to one. And then we do this age is equal to one. Else, if that stuff is good, if we get a good value from it, we set this dot age equal to the value that was passed in as an argument. That didn't change the way our code compiles, but it does some data validation. We, are, we had decided that having a value of less than zero as the age for a mouse is an error state that we want to avoid, so we made our setter forbid that. And if I run it, it doesn't do anything. Why is that? Oh, because I forgot to put my read key at the bottom and I ran it in debug mode. Debug, start without debugging. There I go. Mickey weighs five grams and is zero days old. His warning, you cannot set his age less than zero, defaulting to one. There's a embiggened version of it. All right, so that worked. Not that we printed out his age, but if we uh, did, then we would see that his age was now one. So that is why, uh, primary reason why, you make the data private. It's to allow, excuse me, it's to forbid the programmer, you, yourself, or another one, from doing something dumb with it, from modifying the data directly in ways that the class is not expecting. So that's called encapsulation. And yeah, different textbooks call it different things. Data hiding. It's a very common term for it. All righty. That's the way you do it in a lot of languages. You provide a get age and you provide a set age method. We're going to do it the cool C sharp way now, which is where we provide a property. And the property encapsulates the private variable and provides getters and setters for it, but it allows you to access it like this. I'm just going to be able don't type this. Mickey dot weight is equal to 10. That's great. That's how it's going to work even after I've made it private, which you wouldn't be able to do before, right? Down here, if I did uh, Mickey dot weight is equal to zero and it's a private instance variable, that would be a syntax error. I could prove that real fast. I'm going to go up here, change public double weight to be a private. So it's now private <coughs> double weight. Control S to save it. Scroll down here and we get our errors everywhere we reference that private variable. Now we're going to go and we're going to provide a property that gives us a get and a set method that allows us to return to a state where this is working. Except we're going to call it uppercase W to distinguish it from lowercase W. There's a way you can get around that, but not yet. And I botched that explanation a little bit on the last lecture, so I'm, I'm going to, we're going to hit it again. Well, I'm sorry, what would be the point of one to distinguish between the field and property if the property is just like an accessor to the field? Um, yeah, why would you do that? Why would you distinguish it? Because it's a syntax error if you don't. That's the simplest reason. But there's a way around that. So you can define an instance variable that is also a property, and that fixes that uppercase, lowercase difference between it. But for now, we're gonna, the first way we're going to do it is the classic way, classic C-sharp way. Sorry, I keep accidentally scrolling down to the bottom of the code. I'm going to scroll all this get age and set age stuff off, and we're going to write a property declaration. So we want it to be public so that the client code, the driver code, can access it. So we're going to say public double weight. We're going to make it match. Oh, come on. Public. I guess that gives you all the chance to catch up on your typing when I make those typos. We want the type to match our instance variable, our private instance variable. We're going to call it an uppercase W because that's the convention. When I did C-sharp programming in the past, I made my private variables have underscores in front of them. And then my 
public property is not. We're not going to do that. We're going to follow the textbook's example. So there we go. But instead of using a semicolon to end it, remove that semicolon if you typed it. And we're going to provide a get method. Notice we don't define a return type for a get method. Why? Because we've already returned a type, declared a type for the property. So we just say get curly brace, and we return this dot weight, lowercase w. And cool deal. No syntax errors. Now if we go down here to this dot weight, way down here, and we called Mickey.way, but we're going to have to change that to a W, a uppercase W, because that is the name of the property. So I'm changing Mickey.way here to an uppercase W, and that makes the error go away. All right, am I done? Can I make that an uppercase W as well and have the error go away? No, because we don't have a setter. All we have is a get method for that property. So we're going to scroll back up. And as part of our property, it looks like a class, doesn't it? With a couple of teeny tiny methods inside it. Set, and we're going to say that the instance variable weight, lowercase w, this dot weight, is equal to the value that is passed in. This is just like overloading an assignment operator in C++, if that makes any sense to you. So now that I've done that, sorry, I didn't mean to scroll too fast. That's the declaration of our property, which reflects, which exposes the uh, private instance variable there. So if I go back down here, all of my errors have gone away. The only price we paid is having to go in and make these uppercase W's rather than lowercase W's. So if you start by implementing properties right from the get-go, you don't have to worry about this. The other thing we could have done is to change this to an uppercase W, right, and to make all these lower cases. And I, you know, in the last lecture I had students who did that. But so that's a property. Why do you do that? Because it allows us sorry, I keep scrolling up and down, to encapsulate this to forbid direct access to it. Although it looks like they're accessing it directly, they're not. They're going through, you know, these little channels that we have provided. If we want the setter to do some data validation, we could do that. Let's not allow them to set a weight below zero. Same kind of business. If value is less than zero, I uh, goofed the syntax of that, put a close parenthesis in the wrong place. If parentheses value less than zero, end parentheses, we're going to print an error message. Console dot right line wait. I'm going to make it an uppercase W. Wait cannot be less than zero. Else this wait. That's not good enough. Am I going to assign it a negative value? Am I going to assign it a default value or not? Yeah, I am going to assign a default value. So I need to add my curly braces so I can have multiple lines of code. All right, so if value is less than zero, curly brace console.write line, weight cannot be less than zero, setting or defaulting to one. Else, we go ahead and set it. This dot weight, lowercase w, is equal to the value that was passed in. Now I have a spurious this dot weight equals value under here. If I wanted to, I could put some comments, comments in because this syntax is getting, I mean, our curly braces are getting extreme. So this is the end of weights set. That's the end of the weight property. Yeah. There we go. 
I could do the same thing for the getters and the setters I provided down here. To make this code look good, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this get age and set age stuff because that's the Java way or whatever. It's not the C sharp way. So you could comment it out, you could delete it. I'm just going to rudely go and delete my get age and set age code, which means I'm going to have to provide a new property called age, capital A. public int age get I'm going to kind of condense the syntax a little bit return this dot age oh, semicolon into brace set this dot age equals value semicolon in curly brace yeah, that's not so bad right it's only when you start adding data validation in it that these methods can get wrong. Long, not wrong. Alrighty, I still have my errors down there because our public property has got a capital A, so I'm going to have to change those lowercase a's. And actually, we have gets and sets down there. Get or, you know, get age and set age. I'm going to have to fix those because I deleted those methods. So I scroll down here all the way down to our our errors and where we have mickey.getAge I'm just gonna say mickey.age with a capital A so that we can print it out and here where we're setting age equal to a negative 10 I think I goofed that didn't I in my description my error message I said it was weight when it's actually age we'll fix that Instead of set age parentheses negative 10, it's going to Mickey be Mickey dot age with a capital A is equal to 10. Um, I, uh, well, I don't think it's in this one, but I um, I watched the conference over C sharp, over C sharp and what they introduced in 7.0, and there was just one thing that uh, you can like convert your uh, integers to like hex and stuff. And yeah, it, yeah. Just let you click the little light bulb. Yeah, so uh, there are ways of converting our, our variables to other data types so that they show up as hex. Let's uh, go back here, and I'm sure that for my age, no, I didn't provide an error message for age. We didn't provide any validation for age. That's fine. We've already proven the point that we can. While I'm here, I'm going to condense the syntax, the spacing of the weight getter. So, get curly brace, return this dot weight, end curly brace. I don't think the book shows that, but I think it makes it far more readable. We're going to see a more readable syntax still. Notice that we create our mouse. I'm going to move this right line to underneath where we create it and set those values like that. I'm going to have a, my right line down underneath it. The right line at this point is almost superfluous. Oh, and while I'm sticking here, console.read key, parentheses and parentheses. There is a different syntax, and later versions of Visual Studio actually offer you, a, you know, a little warning off to the side, offering to change it to this. I think I'm just going to have to demonstrate it. Mouse, I don't know what to call this mouse, Sam is equal to new mouse. Don't put the parentheses. Put a curly brace. And inside those curly braces, set our properties. Age is equal to two, this mouse is two, and whoops, no semicolon. Age is equal to two, weight is equal to 10 grams. He's a heavy mouse. Then we have to come down here and put our trailing semicolon. Little bit different, isn't it? Just like named parameters. You know, you can name your parameters. 
and name your arguments as you create them. So is that syntax better than this one? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's better. It's different. It's a little bit cleaner, perhaps. There are other ways of doing this as well. What if we wanted the ability to do this? We're gonna we have a mouse named Sam. We're gonna have another one named Frodo. Frodo is equal to new mouse parentheses, and we wanted this mouse to also be age of two and a weight of ten. Now that's an error. To do this, to make it so that we could do it in one line, and honestly, you could do this in one line too, right? If you deleted all the, uh, you know, all the white space, kind of like that. There we go. Looks like our named parameters, right? But you can do that. That's known as writing a constructor, parameterized constructor that takes arguments so that you don't have to turn around and do a whole bunch of sets afterwards. So that is a useful thing to be able to do. So what is a constructor? A constructor is a method that has the same name as the class itself, and it is invoked by the new operator. So let's go add a constructor to the mouse class that actually allows us to pass in arguments as we create it so that we don't have to do it either in that style or that style. So let's go back to our mouse class. And I like to put my constructors right below all of the instance variable declarations. Now we're going to make our constructor public because otherwise you wouldn't be able to construct it from outside of the class you know, in the client code. The constructor does not have a return type because it's returning the very object that we're looking at. It does have parentheses to declare our parameters and we're going to create a parameter called age so that they can pass in the age as an argument and weight so that they can pass in weight as an argument. Then in here, we can do this.age. We could actually do either one, but I'd rather modify, you know, what, what I'm looking at that you might not be able to see is that I have an uppercase age and a lowercase age. If I did the uppercase age, the access would be done through this public properties that we set here, capital A age. I'm going to do a lowercase a so that we're modifying this directly. This.age equals age because that's the name of this parameter. If you want to call it something else like value one and value two, you could, but I like to make my constructors actually convey the meanings of the parameters like that, especially if you're using parameterized arguments, you know, named parameters. It makes a lot more sense to be able to say age equals 10 rather than, you know, value one equals 10. So this dot age is equal to age. This dot weight is equal to weight. Now that we have done that, we have broken the code in other places, but that, I'm going to scroll down now. If you need to type that in, pause it. Scrolling back down to where we create our mice, this creation of Frodo worked. We created a mouse, and we passed in two arguments. So that worked, but this one no longer works. What happens is when we provide our own custom constructor, our parameterized constructor that accepts arguments, C Sharp removes the default constructor from the class, which was provided automatically, a default constructor that accepts no arguments. So if we want this syntax to continue to work, we're going to have to go back up and add a default constructor as well. So now I'm going to scroll back up to the mouse class and add another constructor. Here's our constructor for our mouse class. You could even put a comment here, constructor. 
public mouse because a constructor is a method that has the same name as the class itself. This one's not going to accept any arguments, so it has no parameters defined. It doesn't need to do anything unless I wanted to give some default values that differed from the ones here in the declarations. That's good enough. That's our default constructor. We had to add that because once we added our con custom constructor here, default constructor was removed by the C-sharp compiler. So when I go back down here, I can see that all of our constructors work. Every time you use the new operator and follow that by a class, a constructor is being invoked, whether you wrote that constructor or whether it was automatically provided by the compiler. All right, one last thing we're going to throw in, and then I'm going to remove it, is that just like our other methods, these guys here could be named arguments, named parameters. So I could do age colon 2, weight colon 10. That adds some clarity. Makes it look an awful lot like this one. Hopefully you can see that these are curly braces. These are parentheses. Otherwise the syntax is very similar, right? Why would you do that? Just to make your arguments more clear. Because when you're looking at the code, you don't really know what a 2 is and a 10 is. You might not remember which one's the grams, which one is the A, but if they're named and you're looking at the code, then obviously you do remember. But I'm going to remove those. Okay, so we have talked about constructors now. We have three examples of constructors being called. This calls the default constructor. Although it doesn't look like it, this one also calls the default constructor. And this one calls our custom constructor parameterized constructor that takes two arguments. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about before we wrap it up in this lecture. The default constructor is also known as a parameterless constructor. That's the term that the book uses in bold, you know, italics and everything like that. And then it ref refers to the default constructor just as, you know, as a casual term. So for the rest of this class, if I'm going to speak correctly according to the book, I should be calling that a parameterless constructor instead of a default constructor. Parameterless slash or parentheses default constructor. I'm not going to make you pick between those two terms on an exam or a quiz or something like that. That'd be silly. Okay. Okay. So doing it this way, we've done age with a lowercase a, and then we kind of wrapped that up in a property with an uppercase a. There's another syntax. And I think I'm going to use that for growth rate. I'm going to comment that one out, and I'm going to rewrite it using this syntax. Public, public, double, growth rate, and I want this thing to have both a getter and a setter. There, it's done. We didn't have to write a separate property, you know, that mirrored, that exposed the lowercase g variable there. We did have to make it public. So in effect, there's no variable sitting behind this property, but there is. There's an instance variable called growth rate, and it's also the property called, you know, growth rate, and it has a getter and a setter. What if you didn't want the client code to be able to set it? What if you only wanted the client code to be able to get it? Let's say that uh, every mouse also has a blood type. Public string blood type. And you can get it, but you can't set it.
probably ought to if you're going to do that, then the constructors ought to give a default blood type, right? So we could come down to our constructor, one of them or the other, and do this dot blood type is equal to A minus. I don't know if mice have the same, you know, serum types as we do. And I'm getting an error there. I can't do that. Why? Because it's read only. Okay. Alrighty, so I looked it up and the reason why it's failing for me and it's not going to fail for y'all using another version of C-sharp, like C-sharp 7, new Visual Studios, you can do that. You can come down here and provide a read-only or a get-only property with auto-implemented, you know, auto-implemented property like that and then you can go ahead and assign it in a constructor. But in this language, even though it gives us, excuse me, in this version, even though it gives us the ability to create one with only a get and not a set, we can't use it that way. Well, if that's true, can I come down here in my code? I don't want to stick on this too long. It would work for y'all, but since it's not working for me, and I don't see it mentioned in the book, actually, Mickey dot blood type is equal to 3. That flat out should be an error. There's no set. Cannot be assigned to. It's read only. It's like it mostly knows about it. Okay, anyways, I'm not going to spend any more time working on that. If you happen to be experienced with auto-implemented properties, know how to get it to work in uh, C Sharp 5 or whatever version I'm using here, feel free to send me a, send me a note. Okay, so I'm going to remove that blood type so there's our auto-implemented property. You don't have to create a separate instance variable for it. Why would you go to the trouble of having instance variables at all if you could just do auto-implemented properties? And the answer is you wouldn't unless you want to do something custom in your getters and your setters. Because check it out, how would you add a custom behavior to the set? How would we do any you know, error handling? For our growth rate. I think that's enough. We didn't get around to adding the method that would grow the mouse though. I think we ought to go ahead and do that. Let's add a method called grow, which would grow the mouse, add one to its day, increase its weight. So public, doesn't need to return anything, void, grow, What's it going to do? This dot age increases by one. This dot weight increases by one plus this dot growth rate. I shouldn't have been limited as a percent like that. Divided by 100. I think that'll work. Let's give me errors. Oh, times equals, excuse me. This dot weight times equals parentheses one plus this growth rate divided by 100 so that if the growth rate is 5 we'll be multiplying it by 105 you know 1.05 that's okay I think that'll do it let's call grow on one of our mice a couple of times and we'll be done good old mickey down here let's call grow a few times on him and then print him out again Mickey.grow. I'm just going to copy and paste that twice, three times, four times, five times. Then I'm going to copy this stuff so I can print it out again. Right line, right line. All right. Give it a shot. And since his weight was zero grams, it continues to stay zero grams. So we better set his weight to something better than zero. Mickey dot weight, capital W, is equal to 10. He's 10 grams when he's born. It's probably pretty heavy for a mouse, I don't know. But anyways, and then we run him. I seem to be botching this. Oh, I should have put the weight 
assignment above our first printing. I'm not sure that weight is increasing according to the correct formula. It is not. I'm not sure what I've done wrong. So the problem was is uh, spent some time diagnosing it. Growth rate is zero. So it never grows any. When we declared it as, you know, a uh, instance member, then we were defaulting it to five. So down here, before I start calling grow, I'm going to set Mickey's growth rate. Mickey dot growth rate is equal to five. He grows five percent each time. Surely that's going to work. Yeah. So he started off at 10 grams. We grew him for five days, and he now weighs 12 grams. All right, guys. I'll scroll up from the top of the class to the bottom because I know it got rather large. And thus concludes our lecture over properties and constructors. Page down. down. Are we Friday or Monday? Monday. Okay. Yeah. So Monday. Have a good Thanksgiving. You too? Yeah, because we don't see each other next week. All right. There's the entire weight property uppercase. And that's the end of the class. So here's our main code. If you want to gawk at it again. Create an object there. Create another object there. Third object there. Set Mickey's weight. Set his growth rate. Print out his starting information. Grow them a few times, make it weigh zero grams, and is one day old. That was the rest of the print. There we go. All righty. Hope that was informative. Read the chapter carefully. Read the PowerPoints as well. And I'll see you all next time.